Remember, the Industrial Age is what gave us an economy uh, and education to advance the standard of living for people in our country. And it built some magnificent things. It built the Air Force. It built almost all of our major capital projects. The interesting thing is if you look at the way this was done in the quote industrial age, this building was built in something like 18 months. Do you think we could build it in 18 years? we might not be able to get the shape of the negotiating table settled in that time. Failures have their seeds planted in success. So organizations that are successful then find that there are more demands on them to do more and more of this. And they eventually get so busy that they, get a, they are overcome by a lot of the bureaucracy that infects every other place. When it comes to new and innovative ideas, they need to be taken care of somewhat separate from the uh, bureaucracy. A bureaucracy is nothing to hate. A bureaucracy is doing nothing more than what it was built to do, and that is perpetuate what works. But when what works no longer works, the bureaucracy clings to what is not working too long. When you study every organization and grouping that has been successful at doing this is you do not ask the bureaucracy to reinvent itself. You do not ask them, you know, the, you don't make the pig slaughter itself. What you do is you find the people that have a natural propensity to be good at innovating. They have these habits of mind. They have this hunger to do things better. And they have this humility where they can actually not be wed to what they did in the past and think differently about a future that somebody else might envision. You pull them out of the organization, and you don't need a lot of them. You just need the right ones. You bring them together, and you pull them out of the bureaucracy altogether. You hide them from the bureaucracy. And you give them money, you give them freedom, and you give them authorities to tinker and to explore and to try. It's a, it's a long story, but how this thing came about is actually began at Squadron Officer School. It's a program where all captains that are in the Air Force have to go through to learn about leadership and big Air Force. And it's also a chance to blend multiple career fields together into small groups. So you learn about what security forces do, and pilots do, and acquisition officers. Um, and that blending of perspectives often results in really cool kind of ideas that come out of it. So another program they created to spin off some of those ideas, it's called a think tank. And essentially they'll pose a problem the first or second day of the program. You know, what should follow the A-10? Like what should be the next aircraft there? How do we fix the pilot retention issue? And our question was to create an innovation program for the Air Force. Right? And so a lot of the folks that got put into our team ultimately really cared about entrepreneurship, cared about innovation, and so we had our thoughts around that. Uh, and so we got put on a team of nine folks, um, and we worked for the next two or so months to build out a solution, like an actual executable solution. And what we came up with was the Technology Accelerator. Um, and that's really just the origin story, because after that, you know, we realize we think there's something there. I want the very brightest minds in the entire world to want to work with the Air Force. Startups are on the bleeding edge of that. They're fast, they're lean, and you saw that today, right? They're not beholden to an existing business model or customer base uh, or shareholders, so they can think truly outside of the box. The last thing that I want to say is that we are not trying to make defense contractors out of these young high-speed companies. Just the opposite, we want them to thrive in their commercial market. Because that way, they can continue evolving their technology at the speed of relevancy, even when we're not the only ones that are putting in the funding for it. People will say, where is the change that's going to occur uh, in an organization? Well, it's everywhere. People who are stuck in the mud when they're in their 40s generally were stuck in the mud when they were in their 20s. It's just the way they are. And you will find at every level people who get excited about good ideas or new ideas, and it's a matter of finding them. We had a lot of no's along the way, right? So we would you know, mess something up in our briefing or we would just not quite get the intent of what the leader was looking for but we would ingest that feedback and make the pitch better. I think all told, 
we talked to over a thousand people and it just wasn't senior leaders. It was uh, folks within the force, so acquisitions in the labs. Um, it was entrepreneurs, venture capital investors. And that's, this is a process that is used in the private sector all the time. It's catching on, but we're just now getting a, a feel for it. And it's called customer discovery. It's this whole idea that you think you have an idea or you have a solution to a problem, but what you should do is take a step back and determine is that even really a problem? And talk to as many people as you can who you think have that problem. And that's gonna guide your solution to something maybe you didn't even know was an actual solution, right? So we went through that process ourselves and we were able to elevate it to the point that we got to enough leaders that had money that they were willing to put that money behind it to test it out. About a year ago, these four great captains walked in the office and pitched an idea that I thought was absolutely unbelievable. It's like, sir, there's a, this great uh, ecosystem out there of folks who want to help our Air Force and help it get fast and help it uh, be able to contribute and do things at the speed of relevance. And we have this idea, and we want to partner with the Tech Accelerator. Hence where we are today. You have this engine of innovation that sits outside of the bureaucracy that has to be protected by the top. Because if it's not protected by the top, eventually somebody in that bureaucracy will see that and they will kill it. And if you can do this, if you can protect these small groups that are engines of innovation, nine out of 10 will fail and you have to just live with that. Maybe even 99 out of 100 will fail. But the one that brings you the idea that's transformational, that is a game changer, that changes the game, that's the one that will pay for all the other failures because those failures basically just were discovery. It told you what doesn't work. In the past, you look at the 80s, 90s or so, before that, there's a tendency to say, hey, you're just a young buck, you'll figure it out one day. But now we have leaders who are very willing to identify an idea that they think is good, that has a passionate team behind it, even if they're young, and support them. Um, and again, that ties right back into risk. Are they willing to accept the risk of potentially failing and knowing that something they endorsed failed? And the answer today is, is yes.